Let's go for a two for one lesson here. Um, first thing I want to talk about is how to manipulate dates and how to work with dates. Often, so we just have one day of, of data here for this Google Analytics sample set. But what if we want to say what you know what week of the month is this? What what day of the month is this? What month is this? And we want to be able to group our results by more than just a date level. We want to roll it up to month, day, week, whatever it is. Um, there's a, hand, a bunch of handy dandy uh, BigQuery functions, and these are generally SQL functions as well, although they're slightly different in every syntax, right, in Postgres or BigQuery or whatever your SQL is. You just want to make sure you check the docs for usage. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a date and we're going to parse it out by day and month, and maybe we'll do a week as well. Uh, so let's dive into that. So there are two SQL functions that I find myself using a lot when it comes to dates. Um, the first one is extract, um, in which you can say extract day or week or month or year. Basically slice out whatever slice of the date you want from whatever your date column is. Remember our date column was just called date. So you can say extract day from date, but that'll give you the day of the month. You can extract the week from date. That'll give you the week of the year. Um, really, really handy function that you know I think you'll find yourself using a lot. Um, and the second date function that you'll want to know is format date. Uh, I use format date specifically usually when I want to pluck out uh, a year and month combination. Because if you just run extract month from date, that'll give you the month. Um, like 10 or 11, you know, for October, November. But you want to know usually, usually you want to know like what month of what specific year um, so that you can run year over year comps for entire months and stuff like that. Um, so it's not really that helpful to just extract the month. You want to extract the month and the year. And the easiest way to do that is to format date. Um, and there's a bunch of different date formats, capitalizing the M or lowercasing the M will, you know, format them differently. You can play around with that syntax. Um, but generally, I just use um, this percent uppercase Y dash percent lowercase M as the format that'll give you the year, 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 dash month, month. Um, so when we run that, um, you'll see the, the output. We have our date, the day of the month, it's on the first, the week of the year, you know, August, the first week of August, the 31st week of the year. And then our year month is 2017-08, just the first, um, the first couple parameters of the date. So this can, this is really handy if you want to then group by, um, group by week of the year, group by month, if you have a whole year's data set. Um, day of the month, you know, less, less interesting because that, you know, that could be a different day of the week, you know, not, not a good comp there. Um, so, if, but if you look back at our query, we have other stuff going on here, right? We're not just using extract and format date. Um, the first thing to note about this query is, if you'll remember, going back to the GA um, sample data set, let's pull this up. If you look at the schema, um, the weird thing about this data set was the date was actually a string. Usually a date will be formatted as a date, so you won't have to do this. But since it's a string, we're going to have to parse it into an actual date. Um, you can do this using uh, BigQuery's parse date function to basically take a string and then format it into a date. Um, so this will say we have this day in year, month, date, format with no dashes in between. Um, again, this is pretty standard syntax, so there's no dashes. And then we want to format it into a date. So we're parsing this date string. That's a, the column is named date. And then we're going to rename it, keep its name as date. So we're going to parse it into a date. Um, and if you'll notice when we run this query again, it's now a date. Versus if we look at the actual data, the date was a string. So we added the dashes, and now it's recognized as a date. Um, so that's basically what we needed to do 
we needed to get it into a date format or else our, our date functions of extract and format date, they're expecting a date um, formatted column there. So if we hadn't formatted into a date, these would break. So let's see what happens there. Let's comment this out. You can just do um, double dashes to comment out any field and it won't run. Let's see the error. So it says uh, no matching function for signature for function extract for argument types, types date time part from string. So it's saying we can't extract um, the day from a string. We need it to extract it from a date. So that's why you use parse date um, and then it can run properly. Um, but you'll also notice that we're running a query on a query here. So we're saying run all of this from this, um, basically this becomes our table. So you can nest queries as many times as you like. Um, so you can basically say, select these columns from this table and basically treat the output of an earlier query that actually ran on a BigQuery table as a table in itself. So you basically create a little in-memory table from the nested um, query that you had here and then whatever's outside of it will run. So you could then, you know, you could nest again if you wanted to, there's no, no reason to here, but you could indent this, nest it again, just wrap another parentheses around it, and this would, you know, run and just pull your dates. Um, and just like a regular query, you treat this, let's, let's unnest this because that was a little bit confusing. Let's remove this. So you could run, you could run, um, just other parameters here. So you could say where date equals you know, 27, 18. Oh, let's just limit it to one to show how you can add parameters on the outside. So that just limits it to one result. So when we nest like that, it's basically like this is literally replacing the table and the from, but then you can continue on with your where and order by group, group by order by limit, whatever it is after that. Um, so nesting queries is very handy if you first need to perform some math on um, on one of the columns, one or more of the columns in the in the subquery before you run your later query. Because let's see, if we if we hadn't done that parsing of the date beforehand, we would have had to parse the date in each one of these lines separately. Um, and the core, you know, the core tenet of writing any type of code especially SQL is, is don't repeat yourself. So if you want to run this at a lower query, you can reuse it later. Um, so one important thing to note about nesting queries where we have you know one above the other, you don't wanna to get too complicated with your query nesting. Um, at most, you wanna nest once or twice within a given query. Um, as you can see, like the query editor window is not that massive. So if you're nesting more than you know, two levels down, it's going to get very complex and you're honestly, you're just going to hate what you're doing and it just won't be any fun. So that's where, you know, I'll get into this much later, but if you're writing deeply, deeply nested queries, that's where using a, a proper data modeling framework like DBT comes in so that you can write each of those queries separately and then just reference them within other queries versus writing the whole, whole shebang in one shot. But hope that helps. We, you know, we learned how to how to parse dates and how to run some date functions to extract stuff like day of the month, week of the year, um, month and year, and uh, how to nest our queries. So I'll see you in the next one.